Welcome back. This is the Ben Shapiro Show. We're taking your calls at 855-236-3228. That is 855-236-3228. Gabriel in Florida, you're on the Ben Shapiro Show. Go for it, Gabriel. Um, I just wanted to get your opinion on how you think with all this looting and, uh, and, and everything going on, how do you think it's going to affect the election? And if Trump does get reelected, how do you think it'll escalate um, everything that's going on? Oh, man. Well, I mean, first of all, I do think that if Trump is elected, then this will get significantly worse because the blackmail doesn't end just because Trump gets reelected and that the blackmail increases. Because, again, part of the agenda here is to incentivize what Democrats have called, quote unquote, good trouble. And that's OK if you're talking about, you know, pri- protests or or sitting at a lunch counter. I mean, that is, quote unquote, good trouble in the John Lewis phrase. But they've failed to disambiguate it, as Wesley Yang points out, from actual Act of evil, rioting and looting and violence. And they're, they're actively doing this. They're actively incentivizing this. We've had three full months of rioting and looting in Portland, and they're allowing it. We've had rioting and looting in Chicago, in L.A., in New York, in Washington, D.C., in Baltimore. Like, literally every major city in America run by Democrats has been racked by this rioting and looting. And the explicit point of it for many of the Democrats is this is a result of all of the anger stemming from American systemic racism and evil. And the only way that we stop this rioting and looting is if we stop the systemic racism. And the only person who can do that is this octogenarian buffoon who's been in Congress for 50 years, Joe Biden. And so if he isn't elected, well, then the systemic racism hasn't been stopped. And therefore, the violence has to continue. It's a blackmail scheme. Everybody knows it's a blackmail scheme. Um, but that doesn't mean they're going to stop the blackmail. And it doesn't mean that mayors are going to are going to stop it, which eventually will necessitate Trump calling in the Insurrection Act and stopping it himself. I mean, I, I think that if, if Trump is reelected, I fully predict that the violence will escalate and can, it won't just continue. It will escalate fairly dramatically. And Trump's going to have to call in federal forces in order to put it down. The Insurrection Act will be invoked because American citizens still have rights and they have a right to have their property and lives protected, even if the local authorities would prefer to allow violence and looting to be used as a political tool against Republicans and against the president politically. So uh, I think that is most likely. By the way, the rioting and the looting are cutting against the Democrats. It's why you're seeing Democrats starting to casu- uh, t- to softly move away from the rioting. And lo- well, it's unnecessary. It's bad, guys. We don't really like it so much. We really have to solve the underlying issues, of course, but it's really, it's really kind of nice. Not nice, unnecessary, counterproductive, unuseful. Not, e- not morally evil, which it is, but, but all of these other things. So Democrats are recognizing the polls are cutting against them now, particularly in swing states. Like Trump, I would say, is probably now going to win Wisconsin if this continues in any way, shape or form. Uh, I think that Trump has a serious shot at Minnesota now because of what's been happening in Minneapolis. I mean, he's running pretty close to even in in Minnesota as well. I think you're going to see the polls tighten in Florida. I think you're going to see the polls tighten in Michigan. I think you're going to see the polls tighten in Pennsylvania. All Trump has to do is shut his face and let the Democrats continue to make the case that they would love to see the country blackmailed into voting Democrat, Gabriel. Yeah, I agree with you completely on that. And I do see that it's now starting to uh, basically bite the Democrats in the ass uh, because people are starting to realize that this is ridiculous and unprecedented. And now my other question for you would be now, what do you think? How do you think this would play out if Joe Biden would? What so, is his magical plan to magically stop all the racism and violence and, and looting across the cities? So if, if Joe Biden wins, I think that what you will see is a softening of the violence. Maybe some of the mayors crack down a little bit, specifically in order to make clear that the blackmail threat was good, right? That, that it, they would continue the violence unless Republicans lost office. So I would expect to see that the violence is quashed pretty quickly. You see this whenever Democrats actually get threatened, right? Mayor Jenny Durkin, the terrible mayor of Seattle, she was perfectly fine with an entire fake tyrannical republic set up in the middle of her city up until the point where they marched outside her house. And then she was like, send in the forces, stop this crap now. So the, they, the Democrats will start to do agenda items of the rioters and looters and claim that they have channeled all of that energy, all of that you know, overzealous, but but good energy into legislation. And then when they lose next time, then there will be more riots and looting, presumably. I appreciate the call, Gabriel. Uh, Kyle in Palm Springs, you're on the Ben Shapiro Show. Go for it, Kyle. Uh, I, I consider myself more of a, uh, a, a centralist. So uh, it's, it's kind of difficult for me to voice my opinion at times because I'm kind of, you know, mixed and matched between the two. Um, how do I voice an opinion without being called, uh, without being labeled something that I'm clearly not? Well, I mean, again, my, my, my common response to this is that it is very important that if somebody labels you a racist without evidence, you call them a jackass and walk away. I think it's actually very important because that's a character attack. It's not a political argument. Simply labeling somebody's character based on policies you disagree with, as opposed to arguing with the policies, is the mark of intellectual stuntedness. And, and you, you shouldn't stand for it. You shouldn't pretend that the person has an, a leg to stand on. And you shouldn't morally justify being in an argument with somebody of that ilk. So that uh, yeah, I think that it is a mistake uh, to to even entertain the argument that you are racist if they can provide no evidence that you're actually a racist, Kyle. 
Appreciate the call. Carson in New York, you're on the Ben Shapiro Show. Go for it, Carson. Hey, Carson. Hey, hey Ben. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, what is your uh, stance on athletes' um, role? What, is, what are athletes' roles to you in terms of society? Because I've noticed that you've, you're not exactly a fan of athletes or other people that are celebrities speaking up for causes. And I thought that as a conservative, you would um, be fine with people basically using their platform um, to speak up for causes they believe in. Because the things that conservatives make the point is, is that regardless of your income level, um, that shouldn't preclude you from you know, investing in politics. So, so I just wanted your perspective on yeah, that. Yeah, so, so Carson, first of all, you have every right to say what you want. And I've said this repeatedly about LeBron James. I've literally said on my show repeatedly that I'm, I'm not saying shut up and dribble. I'm saying he can say whatever he wants. It doesn't mean he knows what the hell he's talking about. And I think that just because athletes and celebrities say things, that doesn't mean that we should take them seriously. I also think that it is terrible business to take what is an apolitical job, namely being an athlete, and then to slather the actual product in politics. So if, if I were an athlete and I want to speak out politically, I would save that for the microphone after the game. I wouldn't be injecting it into the actual product that people want to watch because now you've changed the quality of the product. I mean, people are tuning into basketball not to watch politics. If you want to tune in after the game and watch LeBron talk politics or you want to watch LeBron do an interview with The New Yorker, you are perfectly free to do so. I just think it's bad business. I think it's idiotic that the owners have allowed this sort of thing to take over the actual product being fielded. I think it was true in the NFL. I think it's idiotic in MLB. I think it's stupid in the NBA. And again, my view on athletes and anybody, look, it's a free country. You're free to speak out however you want. It doesn't mean I have to pretend that I think you know what you're talking about or that you have been conferred any sort of expertise by the fact that you're rich and famous in a field that is not this one. Yeah, but do do you appreciate the fact, though, that like there's, you know, especially as we see like the riots, they're speaking in like a peaceful way and they're the people with the biggest voice. Like, uh, if, I'm not seeing, uh, honestly, I'm not seeing a lot of condemnation of the violence and the looting. I'm not seeing a ton of it. I'm seeing a lot of America systemically racist and systemically evil, and the Jacob Blake officer should be arrested, and the Breonna Taylor officer should be arrested, and the fact that they have not been arrested is evidence that America is systemically racist and evil. If every single one of these celebrities in the NBA came out and said, rioting and looting are evil, you should not do them, they are evil, then I would have a lot more respect for the position that they're taking, but, I, but frankly, I don't think that you know we should be listening to athletes on politics generally anyway. They don't have any... You shouldn't listen to me about how to plan a triangle offense, and you probably shouldn't listen to LeBron James about how to plan a, a piece of police reform legislation. Is that, is that fair? I'm not, I'm, not an, I'm not an expert on the zone defense. I don't think LeBron James is an expert on the history of policing in the United States, let alone the, the current state of policing in the United States. Matthew in New Jersey, you're on the Ben Shapiro Show. Go for it, Matthew. I wanted to ask, sorry, I wanted to ask you about the prospect of America splitting up by the year 2033. Um, due to the violence and the escalation. I, I've had this thought for about eight to 10 years, and I'm seeing it come to fruition in certain ways. I wanted to know your thoughts on that. Yep, uh, I, I think that, you know, the, the possibility of the country drifting further apart is, is pretty obvious. Uh, and, and particularly if, if Democrats get away with overriding all institutional boundaries. I mean, one of the things that the founders basically instituted was a system where broad change in the United States would have to require broad approval. This is why you have checks and balances and federalism and, and the filibuster. Democrats want to do away with all of that and just allow 51 votes to basically trump everything else. As long as they have 51 votes in the Senate, they can do whatever they want. That's going to exacerbate a lot of these divides. The possibility of, of states basically breaking away from the feds and then the feds saying, okay, well, we still have passed a federal law and the state saying, well, go ahead and try and enforce it. Uh, I, I think that's growing day by day. And I don't know what initiates this, but it seems like it's growing closer. I mean, it, it, if there comes a point, I've thought for a long time that it's going to come on a freedom of religion issue because there are certain things that people are willing to pick up weapons for and certain things that people are not. It's going to be very difficult to get people to pick up weapons over things like transgender bathrooms. Uh, it's going to be difficult for people to pick up weapons over things like even cancel culture. Um, but if it comes to the point where the federal government, for example, suggests that you must teach your child that a man is a woman and a woman is a man, if you don't do that, then we are going to, uh, then we are going to call that child endangerment, right? Which is something that, by the way, they've, they've started to do in Canada already. Then things could get really ugly really, really quickly. If they say, okay, as a religious person, you are not allowed to enact your religion in your daily life in any way. I, I think religious people will resist. If, if, if the Democrats take office and then they push a large-scale gun confiscation regime, things could get very ugly very quickly. So I, I wish I knew 
how things would progress from there. But I mean, it seems like the country is getting uglier and it's hard to see how the de-escalation happens unless, again, officials reinstitute a government monopoly on the use of force in local areas. I mean, we're watching running riots in America's major cities for months on end. I don't know how that ends. I don't, especially because at a certain point, people are going to get sick of it and they're going to pick up guns and they're going to say, okay, well, you're not allowed to burn my business. And if you come here, I'm going to shoot you. And then that escalates things further. So uh, I, I wish I had a crystal ball, Matthew. I don't, yeah, even though it sounds like I do. My book, How to Destroy America in Three Easy Steps is in fact a prophecy. But aside from that, it's not specific enough for us to, for us to act on. So I can't tell you which stocks to buy or exactly how this is going to go. All I can see is um, things are not going to get better in the near future, Matthew. Why do you think it's going to be primarily a religious issue rather than people trying to defend their family? Um, so the, the question is what people are being forced to defend their family over. So if, if you're asking, you know, if there are riots yeah. in the streets and you okay. defend your family uh, and then you get prosecuted, I mean, if that becomes a major thing and that becomes a state law versus federal law issue, that'd be one thing. But if you're talking about states breaking away from the federal government, which is really what we were talking about here, the dissolution of the United States by state, uh, then, then, you know, that you'd have to talk about a federal policy coming into conflict with the state policy, typically self-defense and the and the implications of self-defense in, in American law. Uh, th those happen at the state level within states. That is not a federal versus state conflict. Appreciate the call. Sam in Hong Kong, you're on the Ben Shapiro show. Sam, how are you even able to call from Hong Kong? How's the Chinese government not intercepted this call at this point? They probably have. I'm just not not been arrested yet. <laughs> Go for it. I appreciate the call. Cool, yeah. Yep. I was just wondering, how do you think um, the BLM protests that are currently happening will affect um, the elections in the coming year? And also, how do you think the BLM um, protests in the U.S. compare with the Hong Kong protests? So uh, I think that the protests in Hong Kong are for freedom and civil rights, and I think that the protests in the United States have nothing to do with either. The protests in the United States are simply an, ex an expression of large-scale angst over all of the issues in the United States ranging from COVID to racial discontent. They have no explicit program. The protests in Hong Kong are about, we would like our freedoms back, please. We'd like for the Chinese government to stop violating basic freedoms like freedom of speech and the ability to associate and economic freedom. Like the, that, They have a specific agenda, the Hong Kong protesters. The protesters in America don't have any specific agenda other than America sucks. So it seems like they're, they're almost in direct opposition. I mean, there's a reason that the Hong Kong protesters are flying the American flag while the, Ameri while the BLM protesters are sometimes burning American flags. Uh, that, that seems in, in direct contravention. As far as how BLM will affect the election, I think it's going to be a net negative for the Democrats. I think they've gone too far. I think that they greenlit rioting, looting, and violence for months on end. And now they're trying to buy it back a little bit. I don't think it's going to work. I think most Americans feel threatened by a Democratic Party that is willing to wink and nod at this sort of stuff. And I think Trump could have not asked for a, or a better... For, for a better campaign platform than Democrats burning major cities. I see. Um, but do you think that the BLM causing a general shift left or maybe perhaps a more divided political landscape in the U.S. might help some Democrats? So I think they think it will. I think they think it'll drive out voter turnout. Um, but I, I don't think it's likely to do that. There were riots in 2014, 2015 in Ferguson, in Baltimore, and it didn't help voter turnout in 2016 for the old white lady, Hillary Clinton. So I, I do not think that the BLM energy translates over into significant voting effect uh, in, in 2020 for Joe Biden. And, and I, I, again, I think that it, it may be significantly outweighed, particularly in key swing states. So it's important to note that it may drive up turnout in like New York and L.A. Although, again, Democrats may have shot themselves in the foot here. Democrats have been saying you all need to do mail-in voting. Well, what happens when the fact remains that the vast majority of Americans vote on the day of the election at polling places and Democrats have told them that they all ought to mail in their vote? And they, they've created some real pitfalls for themselves here. I don't think the BLM is going to be the key issue for Democrats. If they try to make it the key issue, I think it's going to backfire on them pretty substantially in largely white rural states like Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania and Ohio. Sam, appreciate the call. We'll take more of your phone calls coming up at 855-236-3228. That's 855-236-3228. This is The Ben Shapiro Show.